Levi Roots was one entrepreneur who proved the rule that even the dragons can be wooed with charm and charisma. He came to the den in February 2007, looking for an investment of £50,000 for his Caribbean cooking accompaniment, reggae reggae sauce. Put some music in my food for me and give me some reggae reggae sauce at reggae reggae sauce. When you think of charisma and personality, there could only be one name. Theopaphitis. No, 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 no. There could only be one name. Levi Roots. It's so nice, I had to name it twice. When he came on playing that guitar with that fantastic hair, fantastic voice, fantastic song, he had everyone's attention. He's the first person that's come into the den that's actually made a pitch all around music. You got to know about his product with one song. So nice with your fried chicken, make burgers finger licking. He was so instantly likeable, you rooted for him. Ah, I didn't intend that. Um, that was uh, quite an unexpected coincidence. Put some reggae sauce on your list. Thank you. As a Jamaican, you make a song and dance about everything. And music and food goes together. I had the song in my heart. I'm going to have something that when the dragons see this, they're not going to know what, what's hit them. Levi immediately he captured your attention. Better than any sophisticated business spreadsheet would do. But fundamentally, the product has to be good. For 15 years, we've been marketing the sauce at the Nutting Hill Carnival. I've got a very nice order from a meat company in Yorkshire for, wait for it, two and a half million litres of reggae reggae sauce as their first orders. We've had just like a shook hands on a deal. I've had a nice letter from them, which, which I have with me. Now, all we have to do now is just try and get production up to standard. Um, any questions, please? It's rare for the dragons to be serenaded for an investment, but will that help Levi Root secure the £50,000 he needs in return for a 20% share in reggae reggae sauce? Theo Pafitis wanted to know more about the entrepreneur in front of him. Levi Roots, what a great name. Thank is it your much. real name? No, it's my pseudonym. My real name is Keith. <laughs> 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 no, oh, I don't God. see me would have been in 30 years in reggae if I was. Can I introduce Keith? You've, <laughs> just, <laughs> you've just lost so much credibility. Yeah, you should have lied to him and said, yeah. But you have, not if my mother calls me Keith, right? she calls me Levi. I've been knowing that ever since then. Oh dear, right. The dragons seem charmed by Levi, but they're also bemused by his claim to have secured a massive order for his source. Duncan Bannatyne has some questions. OK, you mentioned a letter you had with yeah. an order for 2.5 million litres. Yeah. So have you got the letter with you? I have indeed. Well, would you pass that to Theo and let him read it? We'll ask you a few more questions. Certainly, no problem. And I think Theo must be this handsome guy right in front of me here. Ah, sold. <laughs> I like you already. <laughs> so, you've been selling this for 15 years? Yes. At the carnival? I'm not in your carnival, yes. So, right, how many before. bottles did you sell last year? Two and a half thousand. Two and a half thousand bottles yes. at the carnival. And approximately how much per bottle? 149. So, about 4,000 pound turnover or something? Yeah. The sauce actually costs 32 pence to make each bottle of this size. Where do you make it? How do you make it? Do you make it in your kitchen or...? or yes, at the moment or? I make it at home in my kitchen and my children help me and, and we just sort of do it as a family there. Um, a very small kitchen. We're not, we, we can't do a very large amount at the but moment. Can you legally make things like that in your kitchen and go out and sell them nationwide? Absolutely, because we've had, we've had a, a letter and a confirmation from the Food Standard, okay. which was the, one of the first things that I did. Have you spoken to anybody about what it takes to produce the kind of volumes that are going to be needed yes, to fulfil these? And I what do you need to do? What I need to do is to rent a place. I mean, I won't buy or anything like that. I will just rent a premises. And I think the equipment will cost me about 25000 for, for for all equipment. You're tw 20, you need to spend £25,000 on equipment? Yeah. Levi's still sounding confident, but his ambitious plans mean transforming a cottage industry into a mass production line virtually overnight. Theo Pafitis has been studying Levi's paperwork and has some concerns about the order itself. 
I, I might have misunderstood you slightly because I thought you said that you had an order for two and a half million litres. That's not what this letter says. This letter says if they were to try and market your product and if it was as successful as some of the other lines that are in national retailers, that's the sort of level that they would have to produce to make it happen. Is that your understanding? No. Basically what he's saying to me is, look, we are ready to make an order. As long as you can supply us with this, this is what we will do. Right. And, and they're going to pay you a royalty of 5%? Of 5%, providing that I can supply him. He, so, he on, with him alone, I mean, he thinks that uh, that will create about 390,000 packs. Yeah. Which will retail at about 1.7 million. Yeah. So 5% of that is? You've got me there. 85? 85, yeah. okay. So that would be... to sing a song. <laughs> that, would be, that, would be, that would be your royalty? <laughs> yes. Roughly? Roughly, yeah. That'll be, and then you're going to be selling these guys at £6.50 a litre? Per litre, yeah. What's that in real money? I think it's 16 million something. 16, 16 and a half million. Levi may have appeared more musician than entrepreneur, but it seemed he had an order which would impress any dragon. I went to the dragons then that morning thinking that I'm not going to have a business plan. I thought, you know, Levi, you've got to be honest with yourself. You've got to go as you. So I was well confident in what I had. The loss of sources are remarkably good, but that on its own isn't enough to actually make you into a success. There's a whole combination of factors, Levi's charisma, charm, personality, add a half-decent source to it, give it a shake. Hey, presto. But Richard Farley picked up on a problem with his order and it looked like Levi's luck was about to run out. It's something I don't understand. Um, uh, you've got an order for 2,500 kilos. Is that the one you're saying is two and a half million litres? Yeah. Because I don't think that's right. Not two and a half thousand. Two hundred and fifty thousand, isn't it? Two thousand five hundred kilos. Mm. It's two th so it's, two, two so it's a lot less than you think it is. It, it, it's it is? two and a half thousand. The order is for two, two and a half thousand, thousand kilos. Well, a, a kilo is about the same as a litre. If it's water, it's exactly the same. Yeah. So it's not two and a half million litres. If you've got two and a half thousand of kilos, it's two and a half thousand litres. Okay. And then it says, that two and a half that's an initial kilos, requirement, that's... and then a potential every week thereafter of 500 kilos per week. Which is about 25,000 a year. Okay. And you're, and you're getting six pounds per... Six pounds fifty per litre. Right, so it's about 130,000 pounds worth per order, per year. It's not 16 million. <laughs> Levi made a massive mistake on his numbers. And he wasn't phased at all. He's like, oh, OK, fair enough. And he didn't change a business plan. So he was going to do an order which was 1,000 times smaller than what he thought after I'd explained it to him. But he didn't say, oh, we need less money or we need a smaller warehouse or we need smaller quantities. Nothing changed. So you probably admit to me that your business skills probably would need a little bit of help. Absolutely. I would say that, yeah. So I'm just sort of sitting here thinking, do I want to take a gamble, you know? Can I just cut in to sure. give Richard a bit of time to think about whether he wants to gamble or whether to think about it? Because I, I know where I'm going with it and I just want to be clear where I am. Okay. Um, so you've got no uh, illusions going forward. Um, I think that trying to get into this market, we know how competitive it is. It's seriously, seriously competitive. To try and range run product is kind of almost impossible. So to let you know where I am, I like impossible challenges. Good. And. I've been sitting here for 10 minutes, I've been actually start. I can't believe this is the first time ever I've actually started to sweat. And I don't know whether it's the source that I've just Join taken, club. <laughs> or actually whether it's what I'm about to say. Um, it is a complete punt, but I kind of probably would enjoy it. I've got a few people in the marketplace that I could introduce you to, but I'd want a little bit more of a slice, but I wouldn't want to take too much away from you because I think you need to earn a living. But I would offer you half the money for 20%. It's an extraordinary twist. Peter Jones has stepped in and offered Levi half of the £50,000 he needs, but he's demanding the whole 20% equity stake in return. Under the rules of the den, Levi must secure all the money he's asking for, or he leaves empty-handed. I was about to make an offer. I said, there is something here, and I thought I'd really love to work with him. So I was sort of in the middle of putting my thoughts together, and Peter jumped in, and, and uh, I think he saw what I was thinking. I like impossible challenges. 
good. And it is a complete punt, but I kind of probably would enjoy it. But I would offer you half the money for 20%. I was panicking now thinking that maybe I've blown this thing. So to hear Peter saying that, yeah, um, he likes taking chances, was like, you know, ringing a bell and saying that, hey, I'm, I may still have a chance yet. Is that an interesting offer to you? I mean, it just... Well, it's the only one. It's the only one so far. <laughs> <laughs> it's be interesting if it's the only one so far. Uh, well, so um, we're talking about 25,000 for 20%. So, uh, no, I think, I think that's a fair... That's, that's not a, it is a gamble. It is a punt. Uh, I'd match that, 25,000 for another 20%. So you'd be talking 50,000 for 40%. Levi now had two dragons interested, but they were asking for nearly half his business. I knew that I was going to have to give away much more than I had gone there to do. And having to make a decision whether or not it's the greatest thing to have a smaller percentage of a business that's going somewhere, or to have everything of a business that's not going anywhere. And, and that's quite an easy um, decision for me. I would accept it gladly. <laughs> And Put some music in your sauce today. Give me some reggae, reggae sauce. Other people should sing their pitches as well. I've got an ironing board that emails and makes toast and records Coronation Street. The only thing wrong with this is there's no music in it. Because if you take the lid off and pour it over your food, it goes. Tune into the flavours and put some music into your food. That's exactly what I felt it did. It had a nice little kick to it. He should have musical lids when you open it. It goes reggae, reggae, sauce. I really applaud Peter and Richard for coming on board. But one thing that we learned was that they don't need to do much because what is actually selling here is not reggae reggae sauce, it's Levi Roots. As long as my integrity remains intact and we can come out with some very good product, I think the British public will say we'll have a piece of that. Mm -hmm.